Well, Michael Wright, NashvilleOpenMic.com, and I'm surprisingly honored to be here with Cowboy Joe and his it's wife Carolyn. <laughs> and maybe you can introduce yourself a little. How, how we met is yesterday I was at the Music City Christian Fellowship Banquet in Music Valley Village, and I, I just kind of stumbled upon it. I didn't know what was going on, and I came in, and a very kind lady first approached, you know, you know how it is sometimes if you're a stranger, people will help you a little bit. And Carol approached me and said, you look like you're confused. What, can I help you? And I was confused. And I said, well, I would like to do some videoing here, and I know I'm late. And she introduced me to Joe, and he said questions, and the next thing, within a few minutes, I, I had the privilege of videoing probably about 30, 40 different artists of the right. Christian musicians, and I never got bored through the whole time. It took a long time. It was a wonderful, wonderful experience, and uh, and then and then learned that this gracious gentleman had is a former member of the Hee Haw, famous Hee Haw TV cast, and here he take the time to help me. Now, me to me, that's really Nashville. It's really Christian Nashville, and and so I was so intrigued it's about the cowboy way. It's the cowboy way. It's and, and we got Cowboy Joe right here. And, and uh, as a matter of fact, Joe's th considering kind of getting Hee Haw going again, and he's got a wonderful, we'll do that again some other time, but he's got a wonderful theme song along the line of the Cowboy Way. And, and so tell us about the Music City Christian Fellowship, and it's been in existence for about 35 okay. years, and you're there for it the It has, beginning. Michael. Uh, we started it in 1980. Sandy Posey, if you remember her, she was a star of that era, uh, was playing shows down at what was then called the Fanfare Celebration. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was uh, sort of uh, sorry that there was not any Christian presence at all at Fanfare. And her fans, mm -hmm. <clears throat> she had a lot of fans, and so she had a vision of a a show, a gospel show, or something at the fanfare or church that the fans could go to and hear some uh, the Word of God and songs and testimonies. And so we started a show <coughs> called Sunday Morning Country. And uh, we also started an organization called the Music City Christian Fellowship, which would uh, be a 5013C nonprofit. Uh, corporation that would uh, sponsor this show and uh, so we did we got some of the industry people together that were also also Christians and uh, started this organization and uh, we've had a lot of the Opry people involved in it down through the year George Hamilton IV, Billy and Betty Walker and uh, we've kept it going uh, to the point that this is our 35th year and uh, we have a show the Sunday Morning Country that uh, we uh, lease the Grand Old Opry House and get a bunch of the big stars and little stars that are uh, also Christians and uh, we have a show or service whatever you want to call it uh, to establish a Christian presence show uh, for what is now called the Music City Festival, CMA Music Festival. And uh, so we do this at the Grand Old Opera House. We'll be doing it again in 2015. Uh, and uh, Are you doing let's it see. Currently? Is this... we, our last show was uh, last year. And uh, let's see, I had the Oak Ridge Boys and uh, Roy Clark. Uh, T. Graham Brown, Lynn Anderson, a lot of the great stars, as well as some of the younger stars too. And uh, so we'll be doing we'll be doing that again in uh, 2015. Invite all the people that, that come to Nashville to be watching for our promotion Sunday Morning Country at the Grand Old Opera House in June of 2015. Wow. So that's sort of what we do. Uh, none of the board were governed by a board of directors that are elected, and uh, nobody gets paid. And uh, our artists, matter of fact, all, all work for free. A fellow like Roy Clark, who, my goodness, I don't know how much he commands on a 
on a <clears throat> nightly basis, many, many thousands of dollars, comes in and plays our show for nothing and gives his testimony and sings a song wow. or two. And we have a roster, usually on most shows, of 15 or 20 people that uh, do that very thing. We have an invitation at the end of the show, and it's quite, quite unique. And uh, so I look forward and hope to see it sometime. Yes, I hope you can. Yep. And uh, so, but the yesterday too. That was so classy in there. I mean, you know, it was a banquet. You know, it wasn't didn't spend well, fortunes or anything like yeah. that. But it had a real such a wonderful feeling in there. Yeah. The food was so good, yeah. and like I say, all those different people coming up. And it was just so comfortable the whole time, and, and and you yourself too. I mean, how the Lord leads, doesn't He? The Lord, yes, only, he does, the Lord yeah. could only be responsible for something like that. that well, that that's right. This year we just had a banquet mainly for fellowship and singing uh, for the members uh, of the fellowship that also attended uh, fanfare. A lot of people come down for uh, uh, this celebration every year. I. I keep calling it fanfare, but it's actually the CMA Music Festival. So, uh, yeah, so we try to have we have try to have something for our members uh, every year. The Music City Christian Fellowship, and uh, we're an open membership. Uh, we would love to have uh, anybody that's watching this today that if you'd like to uh, get in touch with one of us and uh, uh, become a member, we have a. Uh, Internet site called just Music City Christian Fellowship, isn't it, Jenny? The Music City Christian Fellowship uh, site website. website. What is it called? They can just go to to get in oh, touch with us. Yes, they can go to the Music website. City Christian Fellowship website dot yes. com or something like that. Yes, or yes. Sunday Morning Country will pull it up. Also. Or Sunday Morning Country dot com. And how about any reminiscences from uh, Hee Haw? Are there any particular stories you'd like to retell from there? Well, um, I had a group called the Nashville Edition, and we were doing a lot of sessions. I uh, I had come down here in, uh, to work with Marty Robbins. Actually, I came down here to work with the Glazer Brothers, and uh, I had drifted around the country trying to get into music, and failed at every chance. <laughs> went to Chicago, I uh, bombed out there, went to twice to California trying to get into music and I uh, <laughs> didn't make it there. But Tom Paul called me. Uh, <clears throat> actually, I had prayed a prayer out in California because I was just getting no prayer. I, I was broke, Christmas time, no money for prayer. And I had become a Christian a year earlier. <clears throat> and uh, the Lord saved me from uh, uh, some very bad habits. Uh, I was... I was uh, very hard drinker, alcohol and everything. The Lord saved me from that. And so uh, I was out in California trying to make some headway in, in country music, not getting any place, broke. And uh, I prayed a prayer to the Lord, asking him. I told him I had tried to uh, live, a, change my life, and I did. Uh, that I had been trying to live the life that he wanted me to live, gave up and drank and bunch of other bad habits, <clears throat> and that if he would help me get into country music or any kind of music, I would try not, I would do my best not to abuse him. That's my prayer. Two weeks later, uh, Tom Paul Gleason called me from uh, Nashville. I was out in my car, working on the car or something. The boys came out. I was, I was bumming the room off with some friends. Came out and said, Joe, you have a call from Nashville, Tennessee. I said, well, I don't know who that'd be, but I'll sure answer. It was Tom Paul, and I had grown up with the Glazer Brothers in Nebraska. And we were the only hillbilly musician in the whole state, I think. And <laughs> so uh, I knew them, and uh, we had grown up together. Tom Paul, Tom said, Joe... Uh, he said, I traced your number uh, from your mother, and uh, he said, I know you're just burning things up out there in California, which I was. <laughs> My mother had given him some propaganda, I guess. And uh, he said, uh, I know you're busy and everything, but we have a problem. He said, we auditioned for Marty Robbins in Grand Island, Nebraska. 
He needed vocal group and hired us, and we're down here in Nashville singing with Marty Robbins on the Grand Old Opera. And he said, but we have a problem. Chuck, our brother, is being drafted. And we had, we just been searching our minds to who could take uh, Brother Chuck's place uh, for two years while he's in the Army. And he said, your name just kept coming back to our, our mind. I wonder what old Joe would do. <laughs> wow. So that was the Lord thing. That's a God thing. <clears throat> he said, could you possibly break, <laughs> stop what you're doing, which is nothing, <laughs> and come out to Nashville and sing with us on the Grand Old Opera? Could you possibly? What could I possibly? <laughs> and I said, well, I'll have to think about it, which I did for two seconds. Yeah, right. right. And I said, when do you need me? And he said, well, when can you get here? All I had to do was walk out and get in my car. Everything I owned was in my car. But I had to sell my car to get the money to get to Nashville. I got $150 for the car because I broke. Mm. And a friend of mine, Jackie Lee Cochran, who had an old Cadillac, uh, drove me, we came out to Nashville in Jackie Lee's uh, vintage Cadillac. Every time we stopped for gas, we stopped for filled up with oil. Hmm. Arrived in Nashville in a cloud of smoke. Yep. Wow. But we were in a Cadillac. Wow. We thought it would be better to wow. ride in a yep. Cadillac. Surely there would be a parade or something for us, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no parade. <laughs> So I knocked on Tom Paul's door, and uh, he said, well, we're on the Friday night frolics. We got to get you a suit. I had $60 left, and went down to Levy's in Nashville and bought me a $60 suit. Wow. I had just, I had 10 cents left over. Wow. <laughs> wow. I know. So we did the uh, Friday night frolics, and from then on, I did the Grand Old Opry. We did the Marty, uh, Saturday night Opry. I got $10 for the first spot and $3 for the second spot, singing with the biggest star in country music, wow. Grand Old Opry. But I didn't care. I was on the Grand Old Opry. My life's ambition. I stayed with Marty six years, wrote a song uh, called uh, Wash My Hands in Muddy Water. It's the number one song. That got me off the road. And uh, so I started a singing group called the Nashville Edition. And uh, we started getting hot, and uh, over the years we've sung in over a hundred on uh, vocal backing on over 170 number one songs. Wow. Includes uh, Merle Haggard and Elvis Presley and just about all the stars well, of that been era. on 170 number one songs, how many published or recorded recordings have we been Probably on? Probably about 12,000 sessions. Wow. Uh, maybe 400. Hit song, probably a thousand hit songs, and maybe about I've, uh, I've tried to document them about 400 top 20 songs, but uh, over 170 number one songs. We did that, if we make it through December with Merle, a bunch of stuff with Elvis Presley, Ronnie Millsap. We did a lot of his early hits, and Charlie Pride. We did all of Charlie's early, early songs. Lynn Anderson, Rose Garden, we did all those songs. So still when you turn on the radio, you get to hear yourself a fair amount. Yeah. That's got to be yeah. pretty nice. It probably never gets too old, does it? Well, really? it's, it's been real. I've been blessed. Then in yeah. 1968, yeah. We, uh, we got on the Hee Haw Show. Actually, they called us for the Hee Haw Show, wondering if we could do it, asking if we could work it in. They said, well, we'll do the... It was a... Uh, what do you call it? Just a... Uh, uh, well, yeah, they're going to put it together, make a pilot to see if they could get it on, uh, in, uh, on uh, the channels. Mm -hmm. So we said, well, we'd do it if you can work work around our sessions, because we were doing three and four sessions a day. Wow. And they said, well, we'll do that. And so the, for the pilot, that's what we did. And in 1968, the summer of 68, uh, Hee Haw was aired for the first time. New York panned it. There's another hay baler out of Nashville. Said it never left a bunch of corn balls. Yeah. Another hay baler out of Nashville. That's what they called it. Really? And 24 years later, we were still doing it. Wow. <laughs> so I was Quite on from the very first show to the very last. What year did it end? 1992, I think. Wow. And uh, now we're back on. We're 
We've been doing reruns. So that show has almost been on continually since 1968, one way or another. We're on now on reruns on RFD on Sunday nights. And uh, on Hee Haw, I was able to do the vocal back with the Nashville edition, but I also uh, got to do the Hee Haw Gospel Quartet when uh, Buck left the show. And uh, so we got some nice awards with all that. I also created a group called the Hee Haw Cowboy Quartet, and we did all the old Sons of the Pioneers. That was Buck, uh, that was uh, Roy Clark, myself, huh. Jeff Smith. And uh, the bass singer, oh, oh goodness, I can't remember his name. I, but we had a wonderful time uh, doing those old cowboy songs. The, it was a salute to my heroes, the Sons of the Pioneers. And Ray Barnett was his name. And Ray Birdie. Right? And uh, so after Hee Haw folded in 60, 92, uh, we started our family group called the Babcocks. My wife Carol, our daughter Lori, and myself. And we got several awards, uh, 24 awards I think, on the Country Gospel uh, Awards uh, Association. And uh, now we're going into cowboy music. I just finished a Western Swing album, uh, which we love to do. So uh, we're still plugging along. Well, we're going to be touring tested, uh, Texas. I'm going to be leading the parade with that big chief, and you're going to be going into all those towns. And well, I maybe, hope so. I would hope so anyway. I love to play Texas. I love to play Texas. Texas is yeah. made for you. They love oh, you, too. Oh, it's a world in its own. It is. Oh, it I, is. It's, I love those Texas people. We were talking earlier. A lot early. of great musicians in Texas, too. That's yeah. for sure. But my wife, Carol, is... Uh, uh, I, let's see, 50, a wife of 54 years now, and she found me at the Friday Night Frogs. She can tell you about that. Get in here a little closer. Well, here. I'm going to make it short because, I'm gonna make it well, Speak I, up, I, I, I tell you, this is, first of all, an answered prayer to his own self because I prayed to God to send me the right man. He had picked up for me and I believe he did. And I was checking Joe out for my girlfriend. <laughs> oh, and Decided he was a little too good for her, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Let's don't tell her that. <laughs> no, I, I, I did. I wanted to see what he was like, talk to him, because um, not all mus musicians are one to want your daughter or relative to date. I'm sorry. <laughs> Probably <laughs> but, a lot of truth know, in that like from what I've mother, heard. <laughs> just like a mother, you know, they never think anybody's good enough for their daughter. We had a bad reputation. Mm -hmm. But but I just doing it well, anyway, to make a long story short, um, he was standing in the hallway because they were not singing that night. But it was packed. The hall was just packed. There was no seats. And um, so I thought, well, there he is. And so I just sort of kept easing over, and I thought, well, I'm going to talk to him. Well, I'm not a, a very outgoing person. I wasn't thin at all. And so I had to make myself do this. And I got almost as close as we are right now. And we were standing there watching the show. And he never said a word. I was and very shy. <laughs> I know you I really was. She can't be, she's too pretty for me. I better oh, just be oh. quiet here. That's what Joel's thinking. Of the way, that's yeah. sort of the way yeah, I thought. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I was with another girlfriend. And I, not the one I'm looking, checking him out for. But um, he started to walk away when it was breaking up. And, uh, you know, most guys will say, hi, how are you? Or uh, so, well, you know, something. Couldn't you see that it was, he was shy? You, you had to know the no, shy type, No, I, I didn't. I didn't of course, you thought he was a musician up there making, he, he, how could he be shy? Well. A lot of musicians yeah. are. Right. Yeah, you right. would. 
but but he didn't. So I tapped him on the shoulder and I said, hey, 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 hey. Um, are, aren't you one of the Glazer brothers? And he says, well, yes, I am. And, uh, and so I says, uh, well, shut up, I said, and I said, uh, uh, well, let's see, I forgot. Anyway, I asked him, I said, is, uh, my girlfriend would like to get your autograph. My girlfriend was standing in the back. Well, she didn't know anything about this. She didn't know anything about it. I went over there, stood there, nothing happened. Wow. <laughs> but she followed along with me. And uh, so that's how I got his attention. And uh, then we started talking. And, and I said, uh, we're going down to the all night singing down to Ryman tonight. And I said, have you ever been? And he said, no, I haven't. He said, I'll have to go sometime. It sounds like fun. And uh, so I, I was hoping he would say, maybe I'll go with y'all. Or, you know, can I still right, get a ticket? Right, right, right. I was so yeah. backward that I just, I didn't know what to say and things like that. Okay, we got interrupted there a little <laughs> bit, but, but uh, okay, so he didn't follow through by saying, he wanted, I'd like to go, go now. Right. Yeah. Right. So, you know, we just walked down there a few blocks, but uh, we got down there and, and my girlfriend, she's we were sitting with me, she says, isn't that the guy that you was talking to coming down the aisle over there? I said, well, yeah, it is. Well, I got offended that he didn't take me up on it and go with us because he was with a girl I, I knew vaguely. And um, so he saw that she was waving at us and he got embarrassed <laughs> without saying a word to us. And so, that you know, those feelings were starting to show even at that point what God was doing. I, I pulling us together. Yeah. Wow. And and um, so shorten my story, the next week we had a double date with uh, one of the Glazers and his fiance and um, six months later we were married. How old were you at the time? She was a teenager. After oh, I, I met her. I was eighteen. <laughs> you know, though, when I came down, uh, I guess I thought, yeah, I missed the boat. I, I, and I uh, used this other girl to go on down there because uh, I knew Carol was there. And you know, when I got there, I was embarrassed to be with the other girl. <laughs> and I, at the right, I started scooching down like this to where all you could see was my eyes <coughs> were those old pews. Because I didn't want Carol to see me there. Even then, we just barely met. And yet, I felt I was two-timing her. Wow. <laughs> and also, <clears throat> being the old guy that I am, I had to uh, ask Jim Glazer to ask his girlfriend, Mary Jane, who knew Carol, to ask Carol if she would go out with me if I happened to ask her. <laughs> so he did. At least she didn't say, I have a friend who might happen to ask oh, you. <laughs> I couldn't stand rejection. I had, I had gotten a Dear John right, letter right. in the Army. And oh, it just almost just destroyed me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I just, I couldn't stand rejection. And uh, that's all part of it. But, but it just shows, it shows that God works on things out for you if you put your trust in Him. And who better to find you a hey, God, you know, He made us all, He knows all about us. Be a lot less heartache in the world if people <laughs> went about their marriage uh, yeah. hunt from that perspective. I had no plan whatsoever to go at it that way. But I never asked Joe anything about his religion or his politics or nothing. I just knew I, he was a nice guy and he was funny, he was witty. And I had no money. <laughs> I had to use her credit to buy a wedding ring. 
Ooh. They wouldn't give me any credit. They wouldn't give the hillbillies a bit of credit. Not $20 wow. in, back in those days in Nashville because right. we had such a bad name. But anyway, we've been married 54. We're going to give it <clears throat> uh, another year to see if it's going to work. And then <laughs> maybe stick with it. If we're still here. <laughs> God bless you. It's Thank just uh, it's a pleasure to see you two together. Yeah, that's, for sure. Thank you. that's for sure. Thanks again to Joe and Carol. God bless. What a privilege. Mm. I was wondering, do you know where does Mary's garden grow? Is it yonder? Around the bend, Mary's garden, my journey's end. Oh, I'm wondering, could you help me find Mary's garden, her fruitful vine, filled with strong, honest youth. Seek great fortune in grace and truth. I was wondering, could there be Ave Maria, a place for me? I could help water, watch your garden grow. Lord, help me, Jesus. Show me which way to go. Oh, I'm wondering as I walk in here, broken hearted, lost in my tears. Will the angels ever sing? Be of good cheer, your journey's over. Here I was wondering, could there be Ave Maria, a place for me? I could help water, watch your garden grow. Lord, help me, Jesus, show me which way to go. Oh, I'm wondering, do you know, where does Mary's garden grow? Is it yonder, or is it near? Mary's garden, it could be here.